Mm. Aha, the tribesman. Looks like he's on the hunt. Excuse me. Hello. Who are you? Oh, you know, just just think of me as uh, uh, coming from a distant tribe. Uh, I don't know, you know. So may I join you? Sure, come on. Who, who's that guy over there? Uh, the one with the Mars ball thing, what? Oh, him. Uh, that's Pierre Mosaic. He has this ridiculous idea. He's crazy. He talks about living a different way. I, I don't know, some kind of insane future where we have all the food just coming to us or something. We don't hunt and gather anymore. Oh, well, you know... That actually sounds a lot like, uh, where I come from. What? Yeah. Oh, guys, oh, guys, we've got another Mars Project supporter. No, 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 I mean, I mean, some of the things he just, you just mentioned are completely true, you know, that, uh, that's what it's like where I'm, where I'm from. What do you mean? Okay, well, where I come from, we don't hunt or gather, we just... That's what we are, what we do. Do you mean you don't hunt? Mm. You die. No, you see, we have a totally different socioeconomic system that emerged from sedentary civilizations engaging in large scale agriculture and. What? What? It's domestication of plants and livestock, you know? What? Okay, it's where you take the kudu you just hunted and, well, you breed it yourself and you keep it for yourself and the plants and the things you, that you gather, um, well, we just grow them. As a result of this, we have you know, specialization of labor. Most people don't even work in what we call agriculture, let alone hunting. I'm a copy editor. You mean to tell me that there is a future where people don't hunt and gather? Yep. Yeah, but that's not even possible. We're hunters and gatherers by human nature. It's who we are. Yeah, human nature is a simulacrum. Huh? It means it's largely bullshit. You know, you see, you know, human behavior is a derivative of a complex interplay of environmentally learned and ecologically dependent conditions, no doubt interacting with a whole slew of what we would call hardwired or evolved genetic predispositions. Genes in this sense set propensities, but especially in regards to behavior, we're softwired for cultural learning and environmentally contingent adaptation. There is no such thing, for instance, as a gene for hunting. Um, subsistence modes, for example, are directly a function of ecological constraints, what the habitat can provide, and we in turn anthropogenically alter that environment, eventually to the point that just about everything we do does not even occur in a, quote, natural habitat. We eventually live inside technology, so to speak. Uh, we learn and adapt to our own human-made social environments. Uh, you, as a nomadic egalitarian hunter-gatherer from uh, the Pleistocene, you, know, you, you have by necessity of the dramatic, ever-changing, labile environments you live in, you move constantly from place to place according to basic necessity in order to survive. By doing this, you lower your ecological risk. And it is this labile environment that potentially set in motion strong selective pressures for a malleable, flexible, adaptable brain capable of immense social learning and behavioral plasticity. Without our ability to learn greatly from our social and physical environment, well, we might not have made it through this difficult time that you're in now. Yes, and the only way to get through life is as a hunter-gatherer. Well, no. Um, where I'm from, we live in predominantly sedentary, large-scale populations that are entirely reliant on a largely technological agricultural base. They provide the food through advanced, highly efficient technological means, and the rest of us can say, well, you know, become a teacher, or an artist, or a politician, or a copy editor. What's a politician? The love child of a trumped-up lawyer and a businessman. What are those things? Well, there's some of the other things people do instead of hunting and foraging. Listen, you and Pierre Mosaic are totally insane if you think any of this is possible and no one will go along with it. You don't move around? How do you avoid droughts? Did you think about that? No, you didn't. How about seasonal changes in the food we find? You can't stay in one place. Tell that to Pierre before we exile him. Well, you see, while you and your band lower your ecological risk of staying in only one place by constantly moving, tracing seasonal changes in asynchronous resources. In my home, we lower our ecological risk of staying in one place by creating very far-reaching systems of economic exchange, which stretch further than any hunter-gatherer could reach anyway. I mean, we don't have to be on the move. I produce one type of food, and someone produces another type far away, and we exchange it. That's how we can stay in one place, making only one type of food, and we don't worry. Wait a second. You mean to tell me you control the plants that come out of the ground? Well, you know, yeah. And some of you take the wild game and keep them in the same place and control them too? Yes. Impossible. Ridiculous. The kudu would attack the whole camp and they'd run away. Yeah, but they aren't wild anymore. Uh, we domesticate them using something called selective breeding. We breed docility into them, keep them in one place, and, and take what we need when we need it. So you're telling me you take all the meat and keep it in one place? And then you take all the tubers and fruit, and you keep it in one place, and you somehow make it grow? 
Now, how do you make it grow? Are you a wizard? No, you just keep the seeds of the plants and you plant them and you monitor them. You breed the wild animals into docility and you make sure they keep breeding. You know? No magic. Well, it sounds like magic to me. Look, don't you even realize that it's in our nature to hunt? Oh, no, not the human nature thing again. Yeah, yeah, you see, what you want is to take away our nature. Say what you want, but every one of us hunts. All our ancestors have done it. And we always will do it, even the lion hunts. It's nature, not just human nature. Look around for crying out loud. Don't you realize that if you kept all the game in one place, everyone would make their hunting camps around it. And they'd just wake up in the morning, and they'd hunt everything until it's all gone. You haven't thought this through at all. Listen, every single point you make is entirely limited to your own experience, culture and worldview. You think none of this can happen because you keep referencing a limited knowledge base and simplifications of both reality and human behaviour. People in this environment are no longer hunter-gatherers, so they don't stand around and chuck spears at the animals, okay? The animals don't destroy everything and go on another one of their epic migrations because they are domesticated and fenced in, okay? And again, the reason you're a hunter-gatherer is because of your environment. You're not programmed strictly to be one. I couldn't hunt with a spear to save my life. And that's kind of the point, isn't it? I mean, it's about necessity and having the necessary cognitive apparatus to adapt, learn and respond to differing social and physical environments, which were the hallmark of our more recent ancestral past, and hence evolutionary pressure to be highly behaviorally flexible. Right, you know the tribe four days walk over the mountains? Oh yeah, those bastards. You know the way they speak differently to you, you know, they wear different adornments, they have different nutritional preferences, and they even have different practices in how, how they mate and how many mates they have? You, why do you suppose that is? Yeah, they're just different and just, just, just stay away from them, mate. They are that way for a reason. They were raised in a different social environment. Look, it doesn't matter what you say, we're hunters and gatherers by nature, and if you had a special collection of magically calm wild game, we would all go there and hunt them to the very last one. Well, yeah. Maybe you would. Uh, you see, in the environment I come from, I have no doubt that you'd have an extremely difficult time changing and adapting, but you could. For a start, you aren't allowed to do that, but, you know, you wouldn't need to anyway, you know, get it? You do this because you need to do it. Your environment brought that propensity out of you. The fact is, as you shifted into my civilization, your values would change. My values would change, mate? That sounds a little bit airy-fairy. I'm thinking hunting the